2002 Mazda 626 with a 2.0 liter engine. The trouble code I want to address is this P0443, which is a purge control valve circuit fault. Okay, the next thing I want to address with you guys is locating this purge solenoid. And one of the things that I do when it comes to purge solenoids is I'll identify the fuel rail, which is right here, and you follow your fuel lines that come off of the fuel rail. Generally speaking, that purge line is also going to be tied in with the fuel lines that come up from the back. So my two fuel lines are here, my purge line is here, and follow the purge line up, there's my purge solenoid. And that's a general rule that can be followed pretty much on any car, which is a quick identification of components, in, in this case, the purge solenoid. Okay, we're, we're gonna do some real quick checks on this solenoid. This is a ground side switch solenoid. We've already identified that using a wiring diagram. I've shown you guys this in other videos, how to do that. Uh, very quick T-pin warning here. I don't think I do this enough. I certainly have mentioned it and I have it in print. This would be page 11, section three. I have in my book a T-pin warning. And I use these a lot and a lot of you guys ask me where I get my T-pins from and things like that. And I have to tell you that these are dangerous tools. You use a T-pin wrong, you have the potential to fry an engine computer. Notice in my solenoid I already have one T-pin attached and I'm not using two of them. One of the things you never want to do with an output solenoid, even though I have to measure both wires, is I never want to put two T-pins in there at the same time. If those two T-pins touch each other, and that driver happens to be on, you're gonna cook the computer. Worse, too, if this was a power side switch circuit, and I move my T-pin, say, on the control wire, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute, and that T-pin happens to touch this aluminum housing of this intake, which is no more than a half an inch away, and that driver happens to be on, you're gonna cook the computer. So please be careful with T-pins. The first wire we're checking, is the feed wire for this. You see we read in battery voltage at 12.4 volts. I'm gonna move this down. We'll see what the control wire reads. This being ground side switched, I'm not in danger of this T-pin touching ground and cooking the computer. The only thing that would happen in this case is it would energize the solenoid. Still don't wanna do that while we're checking it, but in any case, Okay, you can see the control careful. wire voltage is zero volts. This is indicating a problem. Right now this circuit should be reading 12, and it's not. So what we don't know right now though, is there's two possibilities. We either have current flow, the circuit's actually on when it shouldn't be, which could be a short to ground on the control wire or a shorted driver, or the solenoid coil is open. So if you follow section three, page 16, where I have ground, ground side switch circuit problems, a ground side switch solenoid with circuit problems, and in this case we're dealing with low volts on the control wire all the time. The title of that actually says low volts on the control wire with the driver off, which it is. Driver off, we should have 12 volts, not zero. And so the test I'm showing you to do is to take a test light to battery positive And when I touch ground, the test light should light. So you see I'm just touching the intake housing, the test light's lighting. And what I want to know is this low voltage on my meter here, is that from the circuit that's being grounded or is it going to be an open coil? This is going to answer that question. So I'm going to take my test light and touch on that same T-pin. Of course my voltmeter is going to climb. It's going through my light, but you can see the light's not lighting, which is the main point. And so what I know then, that this zero volt signal is not zero volts from the circuit being shorted to ground. I'm not worried about a short anymore. I'm not worried about a shorted control wire. I'm not worried about a shorted driver. That pretty much confirms where we're at. We're done. This needs a solenoid. And of course you can unplug the solenoid and take an ohm meter reading if you want to. There's really no need to. One final step we want to do, when you have a solenoid that's faulty, you want to make sure that the control circuit is good, 
We could have opens in the control circuit too. We could have a driver that failed. Maybe when that solenoid blew open, it took the driver out in the process. So we wanna make sure we check control circuit integrity and the computer driver. And this would actually be a review of page 12. Same section, testing drivers and control circuit integrity. So I'm gonna take my scan tool and I'm gonna put it in a bi-directional mode. In this case, it's called functional test output state test. And what I'm going to do, I'll leave this test light in the picture here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command this solenoid. I'm actually gonna turn all of the solenoids on. I'm just using the scan tool and I am commanding that circuit to activate. And by that test light lighting in the screen, what that's telling you is the computer driver is functional. It is ground side switched. I'm applying a ground. Test light's connected to battery positive. That tells you that that control circuit is good. And it also tells you that that computer driver is good. And that's it. That's the complete test. That took us, what, five minutes to do? for a code for a purge solenoid. Now this is the same procedure that you can follow for any ground side switched solenoid for circuit problems. If it's fixed low, the question you ask yourself, is there current flow or not? We addressed that with a test light. We said there wasn't current flow. So with no current flow in that circuit, the only way we would read zero volts on a ground side switch circuit would be an open in the coil. That's exactly what we had. We finished the check by checking the driver and the control circuit, and that's it. I think that's a real good review of section three and those few pages I mentioned.